Welcome back to the New York Jets franchise, everyone. Today in the Jets' home opener, they welcome the Jacksonville Jaguars to MetLife Stadium. Jacksonville has moved on from the days of Blake Bortles running the offense and have secured Mitchell Trubisky in free agency. They have a star developing power back, Avery Mays, that just happened to be the offensive rookie of the year in the AFC, indicating that the rush defense of the Jets will be tested in this game. From outward appearances, the strength of the defense comes from the play of the DBs. Jalen Ramsey, who is now a 99 overall, heads up the cornerback position, and Donald would be well advised to avoid throwing the ball his direction. A weak point is the middle of the defense, which is not as strong as in past years. They do have solid bookends on the D-line in Josh Allen and Nelson Holmes, so finding room in the running game may be best going up the middle. Can the Jets hold both the running game and the pass rush of the Jags in check today? Can Darnold avoid the waiting hands of one Jalen Ramsey? Let's find out as the Jets try to tame the Jaguars on the Football Freaks Sports Network. Joshua Harden is back deep for the Jags and he takes a knee and the ball comes out to the 25 yard line. Mitchell Trubisky leads the offense out and in his first game 271 yards, no touchdowns and in single interception as he gets going for this season. Avery Mays alone in the backfield, the fake handoff, and Trubisky goes deep, and it's almost intercepted by Robert Ramirez, intended for J.R. Vasher, and here is our first look at the offense of the Jags. D.D. Westbrook and J.R. Vasher are two that Trubisky hopes he can hook up with a lot during this game. That's for sure. Downfield and he's way off the mark on that one. Bringing up fourth down and a three and out for the Jaguars on their first possession. There's the numbers for Sam Darnold. Two touchdowns, two interceptions. Those are something that he needs to avoid if he's going to be successful this season. Pass on the first play, complete. John Ross first down out to the 43 yard line. Jacksonville in what looks like a cover two. Jackson goes left and can't get out of the backfield. A two yard loss and John Ross is down being escorted to the locker room and this does not look good for the Jets. Jacobs takes it to the right, makes a nice juke, and he is tackled at the 40-yard line. Third and seven. And Donald goes down in the hands of Nelson Holmes. All the way back at the 49-yard line, and the punt is away. And it hits at the five and out of bounds at the seven. Olsen starting out the game in fine fashion in the punting game. Trubisky back, fires complete. Andy Isabella out to the 15. Now going left. It's Mays and does he get the first down? Yes, he does. On the stop was Marcus May. And ooh, what a hit by Jamal Adams. Jarring that football loose from Larson. And this one is knocked away by Julian Love. Now here's our first look at Howard and he gets out to the 47 yard line. Now look at our defensive effort. Allen and Holmes, the bookends. J. 
Jacobs, Hampton, and Bailey in the middle of the field, and Jalen Ramsey is someone that needs to be <laughs> just plain old stay away from him. Jacobs takes it up the middle and gets to the 38-yard line. Third and one, and Wesco picks up the first down. Now Jackson in the backfield. Darnold rolls to his right in his sack. Josh Allen getting him back at the 46 yard line. Brings up second and 19. Fake handoff and the pass goes to Herndon and he picks up the first down at the 26. Now in second and 12, Darnold Rolling to his right again and can't get anybody open and is sacked again. Third and 18. The pass is knocked away. Sixth year free safety Marvell Tell gets to that one. And that brings on Trent Lyon. He boots it from 51 and it's good. The Jets take the lead. Three to nothing. Trubisky back on the field trying to drive the Jaguars down the field. All day to throw it and finally he connects. Isabella takes it out to the 43 yard line. After an illegal man downfield penalty. The pass is incomplete. Julian Love dislodges that from Mays as he tries to make the first down. That gives the ball back to the Jets. A screen pass. Jackson with lots of room into Jaguar territory and out of bounds at the 23-yard line. A 45-yard run after the catch. That brings us to the end of quarter number one with your score, three to nothing, Jets. Back to pass. Darnold lets it go. Herndon catches it down to the 14. Second and one. Jackson heads right, jukes, and gets to the 12 yard line and picks up a first down. Jackson. Runs left and into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. Donald made a nice audible on that one to the right, the left side, excuse me, of the field. And it freed up Jackson all the way into the end zone. So 10 to nothing now is your score. Trubisky throws it out complete. Jake Butt on the receiving end of that pass. And Mays can't get to the marker. Finally being put down by Marcus May. And that is going to be a tough one <laughs> because you have Avery Mays, the running back for the Jaguars, and you have Marcus May, the free safety, and May is out of position. J.R. Vasher has it all the way into the end zone. Touchdown, Jaguars. Marcus May was coming on a safety blitz, leaving Vasher wide open down the field, and he catches that for a 63-yard touchdown. And that brings the Jaguars within three of the Jets. After a three and out by New York. Back to pass, Trubisky over the middle. Vasher to the 40-yard line. Second and six, Mays up the middle, out into the open, and is finally tripped up and dropped at the 41-yard line but not until he gets into jet territory. Third and eight, and this one is intercepted. Jamal Adams in the back of the end zone, 
Trubisky tried to go long and threw it in the direction of Jamal Adams. Um, the wrong thing to do. You can see he was trying to get it to Isabella, but Jamal Adams just leaped up and he caught that pass in the end zone. Now second and nine, Jackson out to the left. Has the first down and more out to the 36. Jacobs in there, takes the handoff up the middle and he gets to the 40. And that brings us to the two minute warning. The Jets would love to put some points on the board here before the break. The pitch out goes to Jacobs. He spins, almost gets the first down out to the 44. A timeout taken. Jackson goes in motion. Pass over the middle is complete to Howard. And he has the first down to the 38. Second and 10. And that was intercepted. Hampton has it. And that one is going back the other way. 51 seconds left in the first half. Can Trubisky do anything with that? That was a ricochet interception. Ramsey actually got a hand on it first. And Trubisky all alone in the backfield. Passes it out to Butt and he is to the 29 yard line. Third and seven. Mays doesn't make the first down. So the punt goes to inside the 20 and Howard is out in the open, makes a cut and he is down the sideline all the way to the end zone. Rig Howard, a 78 yard touchdown run And I'm trying to figure out how that is uh, happening since he caught it inside the 20 yard line. Hmm. It's more like an 82 yard return, but who wants to quibble over four yards? It's a touchdown and the Jets have the lead here at halftime. Now let's go to Eurocat Baby for a halftime update. If you were to only look at the stats in the first half, the Jaguars would be winning this game. However, they didn't account for the talent of Rig Howard. A 78-yard punt return touchdown has given the Jets the lead 17-7 at the break. One sad note for New York is that they've lost wide receiver John Ross for the next four weeks due to a dislocated elbow. Carl Arsenault is going to take his place in the lineup and there may be a little bit of competition on the right side between Howard and Terry McLaurin. That's going to be fun to see who wins that battle. In other action in the AFC East, Houston is playing the Bills and Buffalo and are being blanked 17 to nothing going into halftime. Josh Allen has had a wonderful first half, 15 of 17 for 153 yards and a touchdown. The Dolphins are in action as we speak with just over a minute left in the first half, leading the Steelers 13 to nothing. In our game here in East Rutherford, can the Jets hold off Jacksonville to win their home opener? Stay with us to find out because we'll be right back with the second half. Welcome back everyone to MetLife Stadium and our continued coverage of the Jets and the Jaguars. The Jets O-line have allowed four sacks on Darnold here in the first half. Is something going to make a difference in protecting the quarterback? The ends for Jacksonville are creating tremendous pressure. Will that be a factor as the game continues? Let's find out as we witness the second half unfold. The Jets start out the second half at the 25 yard line. Donald back to pass, throws, and it's intercepted. Jalen Ramsey. 
back to the 26 yard line and I can't believe that he threw it in his direction because that guy is just a ball magnet. He took advantage of the fact that he was working against a rookie wide receiver and he made the interception. Mays up the middle. He gets a five yard gain out of it. Trubisky back passes. Isabella catches it and down to the 12. Now up the middle goes Mays and powers his way inside the five. Second and three. Harden takes it to the three yard line. Third and one. Trubisky over the middle, touchdown Vasher. So Jacksonville capitalizes on the mistake made by Sam Darnold. The defensive line of the Jets just did not get any pressure at all on Trubisky, and he found Vasher uh, rather open in the middle of the field, making this a three-point game. Howard breaks out into the open, makes a couple of cuts, and he is all the way into the end zone, touchdown. His second return of the game, this time 100 yards. He weaved his way through a couple of defenders and then the speed just took over. And now it's 24-14, Jets. Mays takes it up the middle out to the 30 yard line. Now third and five, Trubisky alone in the backfield and connects with Mays, avoiding two tacklers and finally being brought down by Jerron Mason at the 45. Now up the middle, Harden takes it into jet territory at the 39. Harden takes it to the right. May misses him, and he's all the way down to the 19, and Vasher is down and injured. We'll try and find out how what's happening with him as well. And Mays powers his way down to the 10. Trubisky to the back of the end zone. Touchdown! Jaguars. Bryson Cooper, backup wide receiver, gets one over on Robert Ramirez in the back of the end zone. And the Jaguars turn this back into a three point game 24 21. Pass is complete to Arsenault to the 40 yard line. Darnold back to pass, complete again to Arsenal to the 47. The drop back, pass again to Arsenal, a seven yard pickup. Now the ball given to Jackson, spins his way and runs into his own man, but not before he gets down to the 26. Now third and 15, Darnold is taken down by Allen. And that leads to a fourth down situation, knocking the Jets out of field goal range. And the Jaguars take over at the 14. The pass complete to Westbrook. And out to the 19. Second and five. The pass to Westbrook again. First down out to the 25. Trubisky back to pass again. Completes it to Cooper out to the 30 yard line. Five yard pickup. Isabella on second and five. Picks up the first down to the 40 yard line. 
Now again, it's second and five. Jake Butt up the middle of the field to the 37 of the Jets. First and 10. Trubisky back to pass again. Completes it short to Mays, and he has a seven-yard gain. Mays takes the handoff up the middle, and they give him the first down. At the 26-yard line, Trubisky out of the backfield, hits Harden, and he's down to the 23 for only a three-yard gain. And this one is to Harden, bulls his way to the first down. Now third and five at the 11. Harden takes it right and is stopped by Ja'Kai Polite. That brings out Josh Lambeau, and he nails a 28-yard field goal and ties this football game up. After a number of three and outs, we are headed to overtime. Jacksonville wins the toss, and they elect to receive the ball. So from their own 25, Mays takes it, and he gets absolutely nowhere, taken down by DeMarcus Faulkner in the backfield. Mays again up the middle to the 29. Third and five. Coming across the middle, Isabella can't make it. Makes the catch, but Williamson stops him before he gets to the sticks. After a New York three and out. Trubisky back to pass and goes down in the arms of Harvey Gabriel. Back at the eight yard line. Second and 20. Mays takes the hand off, trips over his own man, and is tackled at the 15. Third and 13, Isabella catches it, but does not make it to the sticks. So fourth and two. Back deep, Howard makes a cut, and he is all the way into Jaguar territory at the 49. Darnold back to pass, rolling to his right and throws it and it is dropped by Carl Arsenault. Again, rolling to the right and this time Arsenault catches it on the sideline and is all the way down to the one yard line before he's tackled, which brings us to the two minute warning here in overtime. Now at the one, Wesco takes it the rest of the way. Into the end zone, touchdown Jets. And that will bring this game to a close. You see there on the replay, a stand-up touchdown by Wesco. And this one is over. Talk about escaping by the slimmest of margins. I, for one thought the Jags were going to win this game in regulation, but the Jets rose to the challenge and held Jacksonville out of the end zone to push the game to overtime. The Jets kept winning the field position game, and once they were able to start out a drive on the Jacksonville side of the field, it was the beginning of the end for the Jaguars. Darnold still can't get his erratic passing arm under control. Two games into the season, and he has a pair of picks in each game. This may be a big issue if this continues. I know that he just isn't getting the protection that he needs, but the sign of a good quarterback is getting the ball away before the pressure gets to you. He needs to let his receivers know that they need to be ready to get the ball in a hurry after the snap. Like I said, after the Rams game, he needs to practice a shorter drop and stay in the protection of that pocket just a bit more. It may be a situation where they need to depart from the norm. Uh, now, normally, 
you would use the play action off of a successful running game but it may be the, that they need to get the passing game going and use the play action and running the ball off of that success. I don't know if that will work or not, but at this point, I would think they would give a lot of things a shot. I can't find too much fault with the defense. May was out of position and created a wide open J.R. Vasher for a Jaguar score but that seemed to be the only real big mistake. Oh, by the way, J.R. Vasher is going to be out of action for the Jaguars. He had a dislocated hip that's going to keep him out for approximately five weeks. Uh, getting in the backfield for tackles doesn't seem to be a problem, and the coverage to, seems to be acceptable. For the defense, Jamal Adams is proving he still has the goods. An interception both of the first two games and both leaping catches in the end zone. He looks outstanding. The biggest development that has come out of this game is that the play of rookie Rig Howard is awesome. Is it possible after all this time that the Jets have come up with a true return specialist. I know that with the injury to John Ross, he may get used at the wideout slot as well, but I can't help seeing him as a returner at this point. He just has the ability to change direction in a hurry, and he made that happen today. The Jets really need that to continue or get the offense moving in the right direction. <laughs> I don't know which is going to happen, but some changes need to be made. Next on tap for the Jets, we'll be inviting the Miami Dolphins to MetLife. A short week is on tap for New York, meeting the Finns for a Thursday night game. Although the Dolphins are ranked as the number eight team in the league at the moment, there's nothing that really stands out on this team. Offense is ranked at 18, and the defense 20. So the Jets have a better than average chance to win this game. One thing I did notice, however, is that this O-line hasn't allowed a sack on Rosen yet. He's been sacked twice this season, which is a far cry from Darnold's 16 in two games. I would suspect that Rosen drifted out of the pocket a couple of times, which is something that Darnold would do well to learn from. The strength of the defense seems to be the secondary. Not saying that the D-line is bad, it just doesn't have the caliber of players like the defensive backfield does. Superstars Marvin Blades and Minka Fitzpatrick are defenders that Darnold is really going to have to avoid when throwing the ball. That's going to do it for this week's episode of the New York Jets franchise here on the Football Freaks Sports Network. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and remember to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications of new videos as they come out. The Jets finally took control in OT and put the game away today against a very good Jacksonville squad. Be with us for coverage of our next game when the Jets start division play. I think a key for the Jets will be getting some pressure on Josh Rosen. To this point in the season, no one has been able to get any real pressure on him, so the team of Hoffman and Sheffield will determine if Miami just hasn't played a great defensive line yet, or is their O-line for real? To find out, be with us for the Jets and the Dolphins on Thursday night here in MetLife. And until then, for Eurocat BB and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day, everyone.